Hey everyone, and welcome back to another post from r slash ask reddit, the subreddit where anyone can ask a question and the most popular questions and answers get upvoted to the top. Today's question, what stupid myth do too many people believe? That if you put a frog in tepid water and slowly raise the temperature, the frog won't try to escape and save itself when the temp gets too high. It's great for illustrating certain points, but completely untrue. That vaccines cause autism. That doctor was paid off by an anti-vax group to falsify the study and lost his license shortly after publishing. That study is not accurate at all and a huge insult to autistic children. That goldfish are meant to live in bowls. The average goldfish gets about 14 inches long in proper conditions. And because they're such dirty animals, they generate ammonia like you wouldn't believe. They need heavy proper filtration. Yes, you should have 20 gallons per goldfish. That means two goldfish go into a filtered 40 gallon tank. No, an air pump is not a filter. No, a plant is not a filter. No, you cannot put other tropical fish with your goldfish because goldfish require lower temperatures, 65 degrees Fahrenheit, while tropical fish require higher temperatures, 78 degrees Fahrenheit. Goldfish can live up to 25 years. Putting them in a bowl means you are stunting their growth, but not the growth of their inner organs. They stay two inches while their organs keep growing inside of them, which is why they die in two years, instead of living up to be 25 years old and over a foot long. Another myth, goldfish have short-term memory. Actually, goldfish can remember things up to a year. Fire sprinklers. They don't all go off by pulling a fire alarm. They're individually heat activated. The Bermuda Triangle. For any given same sized sea area, there is statistically the same amount of missing ships and planes. What about that it takes seven years to digest gum if you swallow it? Spot reduction of fat. People think that doing sit-ups will burn fat around your belly area. That you get arthritis by cracking your knuckles. All it is is just gas bubbles popping. Also, some guy did a long-term experiment, several decades, I think, where he constantly cracked all knuckles in one hand and left the other one alone. After the experiment was over, they took x-rays and tests to find that both hands were practically identical in terms of condition. You can suck venom out of a snake bite. Too many people believe that porcupines can shoot their quills when they actually have to jab you with their quills. Napoleon was short. He wasn't. He was 5'7", which was normal for the man of his time. This isn't actually that stupid really, but it's my favorite weird myth. That rabbits love carrots. They don't. You give a hungry rabbit a carrot, They'll probably eat it, but they likely wouldn't be high on its preference list. So why are carrots stereotyped as rabbit's favorite food? Weirdly, because of Bugs Bunny. Bugs is always munching on a carrot, but why if rabbits don't really eat carrots normally? Because he was created in 1938, and that particular quirk was a parody of Clark Gable's character from the 1934 movie It Happened One Night who had a famous scene being a wise arse while munching on a carrot. The movie is mostly forgotten today, but was a huge hit at the time. Contemporary audiences, who would have also been seeing the cartoons in a movie theater as pre-show shorts, would have recognized the reference as easily as early 2000 audiences would recognize a bullet dodging scene as the Matrix parody. The carrot munching bit became Bugs' signature, and over time, the origin was mostly forgotten. Everyone associated rabbits with carrots so strongly 
And because of that, it eventually became common knowledge that rabbits love carrots, despite it not being true at all. The myth is prevalent enough that pet shops will commonly warn people getting pet rabbits to make sure they feed them a proper diet because carrots are not sufficient and the poor bunny can actually starve to death. Bonus Bugs Bunny fact. He's also the reason Nimrod is an insult. Nimrod is a character from the Bible who, among other things, was famously an extremely skilled hunter. The term used to mean skilled hunter. Bugs used it sarcastically, making fun of Elmer Fudd, and people who didn't know the reference just assumed it meant idiot or something similar. That's its primary meaning these days. That sugarcane grows faster on sand. That if you're an organ donor, then doctors won't try as hard to save you and might let you die. I'm a doctor. When I'm treating a patient, whether the patient is an organ donor or not never crosses my mind. I will genuinely have no idea. And even if I did, why would I want to sacrifice my patient for some random other patient across the country? Surely, that would just make me look like a shit doctor. The quote from your parents, You won't get in trouble if you tell the truth. That it's illegal to turn on lights in your car. If birds eat rice, their stomachs explode. This was started by the church because people were slipping on the rice and getting hurt. That human beings only use 10% of their brain. Or, my arm's not broken, it's only fractured. It's the same thing! The most annoying one to me is the idea that in America, you pay the percent from your highest tax bracket on the whole of your income. I've had people brag to me about how they know how to clock out early on certain days so they don't make enough to go up a tax bracket. As if you would make less money by making more money. If you earn more and it pushes you into the next tax bracket, you can end up making less money. McDonald's hot coffee case. People think this lady, Stella, decided, hmm, I'm too stupid to realize coffee is hot. I'll drive really fast while it's in my lap, then spilled it on herself and sued McDonald's for a shit ton of money. Now, what actually happened? Stella went to McDonald's with her grandson and got coffee. When her grandson was driving, it spilled. Stella accepted full responsibility for the spill, but the coffee was dangerously hot. So hot that Stella suffered third degree of burns all over her legs. So she originally asked McDonald's to pay her medical bills, which were extremely low for a giant corporation like McDonald's. But McDonald's barely offered her anything, even though they were the ones at fault, as their coffee was dangerously hot and they had received a lot of complaints about this. Over 750, in fact. Anyway, Stella, since McDonald's refused to give her the money she needed, was forced to go to court. She won, and McDonald's was fined two days of coffee sales. The reason people believe this myth? Because McDonald's lawyers are really good at their jobs. They covered up the incident by making up and spreading this frivolous lawsuit story. That blood is blue in your veins, but turns red when exposed to the air. It's total bullshit. Blood is always red. It just goes from dark crimson to bright, almost pink, depending on how much oxygen is present in your blood. The blue color in your veins is because of how light shifts as it passes through the skin. If someone persists, ask them what color the blood is when they have it drawn, because it's not in contact with the air. Here's a hint, it's red. That shaving makes your hair grow back thicker. Or, you know, you don't need to wait 24 hours to report a missing person. If you sincerely think someone is missing, then report it. The faster that a missing person report is filed, the better chance there is that person will be found. This is especially crucial when it comes to missing children. 
that snakes will chase you and bite you, that opossums have rabies, that pigs are dirty. There's tons of misinformation about animals out there. People think that if you ask an undercover cop if they are an undercover cop, they have to tell the truth. An undercover cop does not have to reveal that they are a cop, even if the person asks. Despite what many people think about Albert Einstein, he never failed math. The confusion likely comes from the grading system, but this myth has been around for a long time and is used by people as sort of a motivation. When he was shown a clipping from Ripley's Believe It or Not, where that myth originated, he responded, I never failed mathematics. Before I was 15, I had mastered differential and integral calculus. That higher octane fuel is better for your car. Unless it was designed for it, there is literally zero benefit. That detoxes work. Hey, your liver and kidneys do this for you. That cats should drink saucers of milk. Cats are lactose intolerant. I told my dad this and he was like, but, but, but the cartoons. Yeah, no, animal cartoons are probably fiction. That everything will magically turn out okay. I know a guy that makes about $11 an hour and has three kids. He turns down better paying jobs and doesn't plan for the future at all. Always had a big list of material things that he wanted out of life, but has done nothing to make it happen. That black cats are bad luck. It's really unfortunate to see how many black cats are neglected at shelters just because of a myth. That redheads steal people's souls. As a redhead, I can confirm that I only borrow them. That sugar makes you act a fool. How many kids out here bouncing off the walls because of the placebo effect? That depression is just being sad or being down and that someone with depression can just stop being depressed anytime. There's a lot of bad female anatomy out there, but the most dangerous one is that supposedly women only pop the cherry because of sex. If a hymen is still intact, they think it must mean they're a virgin. There's more than one kind of hymen, first of all. Second, they can break for lots of different reasons. They can also just wear away. It's a thin little membrane. It doesn't take aggressive penis force to tear it. I could go on, but you get the gist. That toads give you warts. Totally not true at all. But you can catch a cold because of the cold. The cold is a virus. You catch it if you get in contact with the virus. That the world owes you because you are a nice person. That people in the past got married and had children in their early teens. Historically speaking, most girls wouldn't enter puberty until the mid to late teens. For example, in 1850s Britain, the average girl started puberty at 16. In Norway, during the same period, the average age of puberty onset was 18. Even outside of that biological requirement, there was almost always an economic side to marriage and childbirth as well. For much of recorded history, most people got married and had children in their late teens or even the early to mid-twenties. It has to be my least favorite historical myth, right up there with medieval people didn't drink water. It's ignorance of biology at best, and an attempt excuse for child molestation at worst. And that's going to wrap up today's post. Do you guys have any myths you would like to share with us? We would love to hear them in the comments below. If you liked the video, please leave a like or a comment. It always helps us out a lot. And if you'd like to hear more and see more posts from r slash askreddit and other subreddits when they come out on the channel, please subscribe. As always, thank you so much for watching and for listening.